Aloha, my name is Larry Grimm and I'm host for the Think Tech Hawaii program, Don't Just Age, Engage. Welcome to our half hour program where we look at the personal dynamics of aging and what, how to make your elderhood an extraordinary time of your life. Today, I've invited Buzz Tennant to be a part of our program, to be my interviewee. And I'm happy to say that Buzz is a friend of mine and also a mentor and teacher of mine. I take voice lessons from him. And he is one of the reasons that I consider my, ex my elderhood to be extraordinary. Hi, Buzz, welcome to my program. Hi, Hi Larry, nice to be here, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you so much for being a part of it. In one of the th pieces that you wrote, uh, for me in particular, you um, you quoted the Shawshank Rebellion movie. Oh, Redemption, yeah. Shawshank Redemption movie. That's from seven years, several years ago. <laughs> uh, and in it, you quoted, and I may just paraphrase this a bit, um, comes to a simple choice. Are we getting busy living or are we getting busy dying? Now, why did you choose that quote? Why does it have so much? What is the significance that quote has for you? Well, to me, it connotes present moment awareness, living in the moment, not dwelling too much on the past with its trials and tribulations, but being in the here and now and looking forward to um, building our future. In a, in a positive, creative way. And rather than sort of getting stuck and mired in the past, uh, we look forward because life is all about, you know, momentum. And the protagonist, uh, Andy Dufresne, who says to Red, uh, as you mentioned, I guess it comes down to a simple choice, get busy living or simply uh, get busy dying. So. I think we need to remind ourselves that we're in linear time, uh, limited, not in the sense of eternal time and now, but chronologically. And it's up to us to make that choice to live in a creative, fulfilling way. Uh, and as I also wrote in the essay, with passion and enthusiasm, doing what you love, following your bliss, as Joseph Campbell would say, growing and evolving in grace, acceptance and humor, or we choose to bow down to the inevitable, not always, but diminution of mind, body and spirit. So I've chosen the former path, which is to live with a sense of vitality and passion. Yes, I was thinking that, uh... Since you're alive, you have opted in for life, but I assume that there's there's not a default that people will necessarily, that we at this age will necessarily opt for living in. I mean, living to yes. the fullest. Yes. So thank, thank you very much for sharing that. Tell us you're welcome. Bit, tell us a little bit, Buzz, about your timeline and your history. You, you, you know this island very well. Yes, yes. Well, I was born and raised in, in North Carolina. I came here in high school, actually, I was a sophomore, the grand old age of 15. My father got a job teaching at Punahou School, Arthur Tennant. And I attended school here, then went away for a number of years and spent time in New York, um, Manhattan School of Music. I got a master's in voice, and then I went off to Germany primarily and performed there for about 12 years, opera, musical theater, oratorio, and recitals. And I returned to Hawaii in 2003, ostensibly to take care of my ailing parents. And I could have stayed longer, but I felt it was my duty and responsibility as their only son. And it was a happy responsibility to have done so. I met my uh, lovely wife, Conti, here. I got a teaching job at Chaminade. And then I teach privately as well. And then I did a little bit of uh, work with Hawaii Opera Theater, the Hawaii Vocal Arts Ensemble, and then branched out a little bit into TV film work, the Hawaii Five-O and independent film. So uh -huh. I've tried to really nurture my creativity and, and 
many ways. Well, you really, really opted for the performing arts. Yes, in, oh yes. In a, a, a very important way for you. And mm -hmm. how does teach, how does singing and how does singing and teaching sort of fill you? What does it fill you with? How come, why is that important to you? Well, because it enriches my spirit. Uh, it's it's uh, that lovely passage in the scriptures about uh, make a joyful noise, a noise for joy. Sure. Um, I love that, one of my favorite uh, passages. And to me, it's part of who I am. It's uh, my intrinsic being. Um, a day without even practicing uh, is is um, kind of a melancholy day. I mean, I, to, to me, it's like watering the the roots of a plant, you know, or a flower, and it just uh, uh, is uh, a daily routine. It's I have a little saying about uh, discipline becomes habit, habit becomes second nature. So it's an intrinsic part of my my daily life. And I see the two as being complementary. Um, mm -hmm. I love to share my my spirit, my thoughts in singing, and whether it's an aria or leader or musical theater. By the same token, I love to share my alleged uh, uh, gifts with with students and inspire them and encourage them. So it works in tandem, singing yes, well, and I teaching. Yeah, I can I can tell I can vouch for the the latter part because I'm I'm one who's inspired by what you give me and what you uh, impart to me in my voice, the work with my voice. Uh, you uh, you in your essay you started off your essay sort of with a um, kind of a question um, a, on the brink of your sixty fifth on the eve of your sixty fifth birthday. Correct. Sort That's of. correct. Now now I want to know did 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 this birthday present you with a sense of transition that you were moving into a new stage of life yes absolutely it was one of those transitional periods like for example coming back from europe moving into the role of a caregiver mm -hmm. and in in embracing that responsibility in this way as I, as you know i wrote it on the eve of my 65th birthday and i had jokingly said to my wife that, you know, I'm still too young for Medicare, but 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 too old for women to care. But anyway, <laughs> that kidding aside, I on a serious note, I, I did ponder the question. And of course, the the uh, title, which appears in your in your uh, uh, lovely book, Don't Just Age Engage, is of course the artful codger. Uh, a little play on the artful dodger. But yes, you're correct. I was in a very reflective mood, a little bit tongue in cheek, but underlying seriousness of it. And, and uh, alluding to the typical landmark birthdays that we celebrate and the, the milestones and uh, seeing 6065 as the new uh, youth of old age, as Victor Hugo would say, you know, and seeing it as a, yeah. a new chapter and a challenging opportunity, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, Buzz, do you ever, are you ever tempted just to say, ah, oh, forget it. I'm just going to give up and just going to go the way of the diminution and I'm, I'm going to throw in the towel. It's not worth all. You know, that's, that's, that's a good question. You know, it's interesting. My grandmother, Madge Tennant, very renowned artist here, mm -hmm. she used to say, I would rather fail sincerely than succeed easily. And like Faulkner would say, we shall be remembered for the splendor of our failures. Um, I would much rather, like Bernard Bernard Shaw, you know, uh, don't be a ball of complaints about shoulda, woulda, coulda, live a life of regret, but just really, uh, again, if you don't mind my quoting uh, Kipling, uh, fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of long distance run. <laughs> and I love that because it's it's taking a proactive uh, approach to to running, and that manifests itself in my doing wind sprints and things. But as a metaphor, but um, yeah, I, I I get down, I get discouraged. Uh, you know, this pandemic has been dispiriting. Uh, 
we, we lost a, a family member uh, over a year and a half ago to, to COVID. So it's presented a daily uh, challenge. And But you try to make the best of it, try to be a bit stoic. We have grown vegetable garden in our in our in the back of our home and you know it enc it encourages you uh, my father would say life is a burr or a spur so i've tried to make it a spur and 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 get incentivized and, and move ahead yeah very good uh, very good and so so what are the things that you're looking forward to in the future that are going to be further fulfilling for you anything different are you uh uh, have you set out any new goals, you and Conti? Um, well, you know, we love to travel. We love to travel, and we've done a lot. Uh, she's from Sri Lanka. We traveled there. We did Bhutan, Mongolia. Uh, did a tour to Ireland five years ago. Uh, yeah, we we love the um, international travel, and um, I enjoy uh, writing poetry, essays. Uh, I want to continue that uh one doesn't sing forever unless you're tony bennett god bless him <laughs> uh, you know but i like my father he inspired me he he gave his swan song uh 80 it was a lovely leader in art song uh recital uh -huh. um as long as um, i keep the voice in shape which i intend to do uh, it's, uh, I'll continue that, the teaching, of course, uh, writing, uh, yeah, maybe do a memoir, uh, a number of things I kind of have in mind, but a very active, uh, you know, elderhood, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. 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 Well, when I do my, when I do my coaching with, with folks for their extraordinary elderhood, mm -hmm. I emp emphasize what you already have done naturally, which is to choose some goals. Yeah. Choose those areas that, as you said, Joseph Campbell said it so good, so well, that um, that enhance the bliss experience. Yeah, follow and your bliss, exactly. All of those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so often, um, I don't, this program doesn't look at issues um, as much as personal development in my mm -hmm. program, don't just age, but engage. However, there are cultural dimensions that will put up roadblocks everywhere we look. They will put up roadblocks to uh, to your bliss by saying you're too old to do that, or you should yes. get involved in that, or and sometimes exactly. from, the, from the people who are closest to us, most meaningfully uh, supportive, they'll they'll assume that we are that our age sets us on the margins, and that's why it's yes. I appreciate you bringing up the topic. Of the uh, or the name of the show, which is "Don't Just Age Engage," also the name of my book. Yes, Don't just age engage, because if we buy into that personally, then it's our downfall. Yes, yes. We buy into that diminution that you mentioned, the, the slow spiral down. That's what aging yeah. is all about. It's not what aging is all about. No, no. And again, it's a choice, you know. And keep your mind, body, and spirit healthy and active. And uh, it's the old quote about, you know, yeah. you know, it's uh, aging is a state of mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I think we've been a uh, victim of kind of stereotyping over the years. And I think that's changing the demographic uh, in acknowledging, for example, those in history, uh, right, you know, Verity's two most famous operas were well towards the end of his life and he was in his 80s o o o o hmm. othello and falstaff ah yes and he was at a venerable age when he composed them you know and um, mm -hmm. even da vinci you can you can go on and on uh, mm -hmm. that age is no barrier mm -hmm. yeah what about what it's just, very inspiring let's go into singing a bit um sure and people who um, are aging in uh, my age group, um, mm -hmm. your age group now, um, would you encourage them to seek training and singing and to utilize their voices more fully? Abs absolutely, absolutely. Actually, my my oldest student is eighty seven, ah. and he 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 revels in it. He loves it um, now. 
again, there's no time limit on it. I heard a wonderful story about a gentleman who took piano lessons in his 90s. And of course, he wasn't had any grand aspirations other than it gave him joy and fulfillment. And he did it for himself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's even, I go back to my days at Manhattan School of Music in New York City. We had a wonderful, rather eccentric opera director who loved Maria Callas, the famous Greek uh, American opera singer. And she said, it never matters whether you have that moment, it's that you train for that moment. Mm. And even just the process, even, I haven't had any, well, with the exception of making my debut in Norwegian this past weekend at the Lutheran Church, uh, uh -huh. doing this lovely uh, Edvard Grieg choral piece, um, I haven't had much in the way of live performances for say a year and a half. So that said, um, I'm rededicated myself to the process. Mm -hmm. And like my grandmother, Madge Tennant would say, an artist, be it graphic or performing, must live a life of continuous concert pitch. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea of keeping your instrument tuned for the moment, which may never come. But I think <coughs> you know, being somewhat sanguine in terms of you know, the pandemic lifting, things will be opening up slowly. And little by little, we'll have more opportunities. But it's important to keep at that concert pitch in the meantime and uh -huh. don't get complacent and oh well you know i'm not going to practice today or whatever you know yeah i don't have anything coming up on my performance calendar so i'm just gonna give it up yeah so <clears throat> excuse me no oh, okay one of the things that uh, you mentioned also in that essay that you so good was um this looking back uh yes reflective mode i had um one of the an interesting interesting phrase come to me across my screen uh this one group said when we move from when after we retire quote we move from role to soul yes that's and good i like that i yeah i thought you would nice. i thought yeah. you would just so good with the turn but have you looked back into your, as you look back into your life, do you pull things from your life that are, you find yourself pulling things from your life that are really, this is what was so important. I mean, you quote mom and dad, you quote grandma, you quote people all the time. Are these ways of reminding yourself that this is who you are or who you want to be or what? Yes, yes, I see them as harbor lights, uh, you know, guiding lights uh, that uh -huh. inspire me. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a way of sort of communing with the spirit in a way too, because they're all yeah. gone, uh, but yet very much alive uh -huh. in my in my soul. As you know, I, I did a centennial video tribute to my mother earlier this year, and uh, it was very 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 uh, healing and fulfilling at the same time yeah very much so yeah 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 i call that remembrance um yeah yeah and the re remembrance is um uh, anamnesis in greek yes and it, yes and it really means to refuse to forget <laughs> and yeah amnesia. absolutely yeah and, and um but but the um the meaning of the word is to pull from the past into the present the mm -hmm. impact that that uh, spiritual impact that yeah. spiritual emotional dimension so yeah. uh, you integrate it into your present life again well this is really it, remarkable and I, I i consider you to be a a great uh example of pursuing extraordinary elderhood oh have, you're very kind thank you have the externals of this uh island life had an impact on that for you I mean, have you ever wanted to go back to good old Germany? And, and well, I spent nearly 13 years there. And then I was in New York for seven years there. I, because of, as I say, we've traveled so extensively, um, you know, we are geographically isolated. And because of the pandemic, we've shut down so many performing venues, you know, choir practices and 
Uh, so you have to kind of create your own opportunities. Um, I don't particularly miss uh, Germany. I think we'll, we'll go back to visit Europe for sure. We're planning hopefully in the next year or so. Uh, but, it, but it is somewhat limited here, uh, I, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, limited resources. But I think slowly but surely the theaters are picking up, uh, going from digital to socially distanced live performances. I think Hawaii Theater. Uh, so it's 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 encouraging, mm -hmm. and I think keeping that worldly perspective, having traveled so much, the interior landscape, keep that alive. I don't get feel that um, antsy, you know, living on a small island. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah, if that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The interior landscape. I love that phrase. Yeah, that was a poem and I wrote some while ago. Yeah. Would you share with us some of your your writing and some of your? Sure, sure. We we have time. Yeah. Let me. May I read this one? I wrote this. Uh, it's called. It's called awareness. Okay. Hold fast, and live confidently from your vital center. Drink deep from the timeless source of a limitless being, drawing spiritual sustenance from the fathomless well of infinite wisdom. Grasping the vastness of eternal verities, radiate love as concentric circles emanating from a quiet, still point of calm, underlying the gently rippling surface of tranquil waters. Divine awareness unfolds, and the serenity of an untroubled spirit manifests like the delicate unfolding of a petal as it grows inevitably toward the light. Oh, beautiful. Thank that's you. Beautiful, Buzz. Thank you. And that's uh, something you wrote recently? Actually, uh, in the millennium in Europe, in 2000, I wrote oh, it. I wrote a wow. collection of, of poems. Yeah, that's part of the little collection I wrote. Yeah. yeah. You have been doing some writing, though, recently. And um, is there anything else that you would share from written work that you've done? Well, you know, if you want, I can share. Uh, a little excerpt of the essay for those that, okay. if you if you'd Please like, because I just thought, yeah, it's kind of apropos to what we're talking about. Good. Being regarded as something of a mentor, role model, teacher, perhaps even a wise old sage, who's willingly capable of dispensing dispensing occasional tidbits of advice, whether solicited or not, as Socrates once said, the unexamined life is not worth living, which I've always ascribed to. To that, I would only add the necessary task of taking a moral inventory of your life and ask yourself, not only am I happy, but am I worthy? Was I useful? In retrospect, did I serve a cause larger than myself? What did I give others unconditionally? Was I kind or was I petty and mean-spirited? Was I grateful for the blessings that were bestowed upon me? Or did I take my gifts for granted, including my own health? Did I not only hear, but was I a compassionate listener? Did I follow in the words of Lincoln, quote, the better angels of my nature, unquote. Perhaps most significantly, <clears throat> as a wealthy businessman of renown was quoted as saying, in his final hours, quote, was I loved or more importantly, did I love? In the final analysis, how else are we to fulfill our purpose on earth other than to love, to learn, to serve others, and in the process gain wisdom? It is in that spirit that composer Gene Shear from American Anthem challenges us with the following. What will be our legacy? What will our children say? Let them say of me, I was one who believed in sharing the blessings I received. Let me know in my heart when my days are through, I gave my best to you. So wonderful, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And wish you aloha. I think the Kauai is a nonprofit entity that 
that raises up all kinds of issues, makes this platform available for everybody, and um, is supported by donations. So if you go to thinktechhawaii.com, anyone, and click on the donate button, you'll be able to make a contribution to keep us going. We sure appreciate that. Think, don't just age engages every two months, every two weeks uh, on Tuesday at two o'clock. And I look forward to see you in, seeing you again here in two weeks. In the meantime, aloha and uh, peace be with you.